Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Teen Book Tuesday. My name is Lori, and I'm the Teen Librarian at Manlius Library. And today I'm going to start a series of basically book reviews where I'm telling you about some of my favorite titles in the teen room in a particular genre. It's summertime, and that's wonderful, and there's always extra time to read in the summer. And sometimes you don't necessarily want the new book that's on the shelf, or maybe the book you're going into the to the library to look for is checked out. So it's good to have a list of books to fall back on when you're just looking for something good to read. So today I'm going to tell you about some of my favorite fantasy. Most of them are series. All of them. All of them are series. And all of them are wonderful. It's not just fantasy. I've got a couple of science fiction -y books here to tell you about too. We're going to start with one of my new favorites. This is The Hazelwood by Melissa Albert. And this is the story of Alice Prosperdine. I think that's how I say it. Prosperpine. Sorry. Alice Prosperpine. She has grown up on the road with her mom, who always seems to be like running away from something. Alice is never really sure what it is, but they, they, they just have terrible luck. If they didn't have bad luck, they wouldn't have any luck at all. Alice's grandmother wrote a book of very, very dark fairy tales years ago, and then she became a recluse at her estate, the Hazelwood. That's the title of the book, is The Hazelwood. And although she never wrote anything else, her book of fairy tales, very, very dark, they, it, it got a cult following, just masses of people following after and, and just enthralled by these fairy tales. And Alice has always kept herself kind of separate from that. She never really wanted any of the, the big hoopla surrounding that. Well, one day, her mother is taken, stolen away by this really strange character that Alice knows somehow. She's not sure how, but she remembers him. And she, she finds a letter, and she has to go to the Hazelwood to find her mother. Enter Ellery Finch. Ellery Finch is one of those cult followers that really, I mean, it's not a literal cult, but he is one of those who is obsessed with and has researched and just, just is enthralled by the, um, the tales from the Hazelwood that her grandmother wrote. And together they go to the Hazelwood, the estate, where they discover it's not really just an estate, but it's a portal to another world. And it turns out on the other side of that portal are all of the characters and all of the fairy tales that her grandmother had written about. And they're not happy and they're trying to cross the portal. So it becomes a race. She needs to find her mother. She needs to solve the puzzle of what her grandmother has actually written. And they need to save the world, both on the other side and here. So that's The Hazelwood by Melissa Albert. And it is... Um, it's unlike anything I've ever read, and it's wonderful. There's a sequel out now, and also Tales from the Hazelwood, which is the collection of fairy tales, has been written and published. So that's by Melissa Albert. Next up, The Queen of Nothing. This is actually the second in the series. The first one is The Cruel Prince. This is the story of Jude. Jude and her sister were just kind of living their life, when the king of fairy came and stole them away to fairyland. Because it turns out that Jude's mom had once lived in fairy and had run away when she decided it really wasn't for her. Unbeknownst to fairy, she actually had a child with the king of fairy and he came to take her back and that's Jude's sister. Jude is actually full mortal. Well, when they get to fairyland, Jude loves it. She wants to live there forever. She wants to be part of it. She wants to be one of them. Of course, she's never going to be. But she also wants to be a warrior in the, in the fairy um, army to serve on the king's court. Her sister, who happens to be half fae, fights it. She fights everything about it. She wants nothing to do with it. She wants to live in the mortal world, but of course she can't because she doesn't know how to get back. So this trilogy, it's the cruel prince, the queen of nothing, and there is a third one, whose name escapes me now, is the story of Jude and her sister and how they navigate life in fairy, life on the fairy court, the dangers that they encounter and the adventures that they have. It's really wonderful. And actually anything by Holly Black, Holly Black is the author. 
anything by Holly Black. This is the Folk of the Air series, but she also wrote The Darkest Part of the Forest, The Coldest Girl in Cold Town, and innumerable other wonderful dark fairy tales. Okay, something different. This one is definitely science fiction. And this is the story of Rosie Sinclair. It's called Vault of Dreamers by Kara M. O'Brien. And this is the first of, it's very science fiction, very dystopian. Um, Rosie wants to be a filmmaker. The only way she can do that is to go to the vault, the special school. And what they do at the school is they enhance your sleep to increase your creativity. It's very controlled and, and the classes are all surrounding creativity and the sleep is, is very controlled. So one night, Rosie, who is just thrilled to be got, have gotten into this school, she starts to feel like something's off. So she skips a sleeping pill and she discovers that not only is something off, but there is something extremely nefarious going on at this school. And she has to figure out how, and she has to figure out what, and she has to kind of figure out who she can trust to help her solve this problem and basically save the students at the school. Um, the tagline of this one is, what happens when the dreams you follow are no longer your own? And that's Vault of Dreamers by Kara M. O'Brien. And this is uh, the first of a trilogy. This is one of my favorites. She's one of my favorites. The, the author is Marissa Meyer. This one is Cinder. It is the first book of the Lunar Chronicles. That's Cinder, which also includes Scarlet, Cress, Winter, Stars Above, and Fairest. Um, and there might be one more now as well. Uh, this is a science fiction, steampunky, Cinderella, and other fairy tales meshed together in space. I, there's just no better description than that. Um, Cinder is the main character in this one, and each book, Scarlet brings in another Red Riding Hood, or Cress brings in kind of a Rapunzel character, and, and it's all meshed together, and it's, they're just wonderful. They're really, there's they're tons of fun, um, and that's Marissa Meyer, also a prolific author, but I highly recommend The Lunar Chronicles. And Fairest, the last one, is actually a standalone kind of a prequel that is the story of the evil queen. Okay, I've got some dark stuff for you now. This one is called The Bone Witch by Rin Chopeco. It's hard to see the cover because it's very dark. Let me be clear. I never intended to raise my brother from his grave, though he may claim otherwise. If there's anything I've learned from him in the years since, it's that the dead hide truths as well as the living. And this is the story of Tia. Tia is a witch. She comes from a family of witches, but her power is different because it comes from necromancy. And that makes her a very powerful bone witch, but she can't control her powers. So she leaves home and she goes far away to, to study with an older, more powerful and more controlled bone witch. But her world is at war. And of course she gets drawn up into the war and it's just, it's a super dark, really, really different book. Um, also the first of a trilogy. And Rin Chapico has written other stories as well, or other novels as well. So that's The Bone Witch. I don't want to tell you too much more about it because it's just so enthralling to learn the magic as you're reading the books. So The Bone Witch by Rin Chapico. Another pretty dark one is, th these covers are so dark too, is Three Dark Crowns. This one is actually not part of a trilogy. It's part of a quadrology. There's four of them. There's four books. Um, and they're all out. All of the, the books that, I've, that I'm telling you about today, the series are complete, with the possible exception of the next one, which I'll talk to you about in a second. So this is Three Dark Crowns by Kendar Blake. And... The tagline is, when kingdom come, there will be one. In their kingdom, every generation, there is a set of triplets born, uh, triplet girls, a set of triplet girls born. And when the girls turn 16, they battle for who is going to become queen. And each has their own power. Um, 
And this is the story of, and I'm going to get their names wrong, so I'm going to look on the, I'm going to read them on the inside. Katrine is one of them, Arsino and Mirabella. And each has a different power and they're separated at birth as they always are, every generation. They're separated at birth and raised according to the training of their power. And then when they become 16, they have to battle each other for the, for the, um, the right to be the queen of the kingdom. There's a poem on the back. Three dark queens are born in a glen. Seek sweet little triplets will never be friends. Three dark sisters, all fair to be seen, two to devour and one to be queen. It's not just a battle for the crown, it's a battle for their lives. And it's it's really it's really good. It's wonderful and there's lots of twists that even I, who has been I've been reading these books forever, even I didn't see a lot of the twists in that one coming. Just one left. This is maybe my favorite portal fantasy series ever. Um, Hazelwood is close, but this is more straight portal. It's called Every Heart a Doorway. This is the first one. And it's by Seanan McGuire. And this is the story of Ellen, Eleanor West's Home for Wayward Children. And it's basically the story of what happens when Happily Ever After ends. It's a story of children who find a door, and when they go through that door, they find themselves in another world, a world of their dreams. And then maybe that world just decides it's no longer for them, and they, it kicks them out, and now they're no longer part of this world. Eleanor West is the place for them to go, because it turns out Eleanor is also one of those children who always, always kept looking for the door. This is a series, there's six of them now, and there's a seventh one on its way. Uh, the first, third, and fifth books follow this storyline pretty straight, so you want to read this one first. But the second, fourth, and sixth books are standalones, and they're just stories of some of the children in the worlds and looking for the worlds again. That's called Every Heart a Doorway by Seanan McGuire. And that's the um, Wayward Children series really, really good. And also really small. So there's, I mean, some of these books are pretty hefty and some of them are pretty tiny. All right, there you go. Some great fantasy to get you started. I love fantasy. It's one of my series, one of my genres that I always like to read. So if you're in the library, we'd love to see you pop over to the children's room or into the teen room and, and, um, we can chat about some more fantasy books that are great to read. Uh, next week, I will be talking about my favorite historical fiction, which is another of my favorite genres. You can sign up for the Teen Summer Reading Program if you go over to our website at manliestlibrary.org and click on the Summer Reading Tile. Thanks for joining me today. My name is Lori. You can find me here on our YouTube channel for Teen Book Tuesday every Tuesday at 2.30. And um, next week, I'll have historical fiction. I'll see you next time. Happy reading.